Greetings everybody. Uh, I would just like to share a little bit about what I believe sin is and how we are forgiven. Many times we walk around with guilt and we walk around with um, condemnation. And I'm not talking about condemnation as feeling guilty about something, but where we are condemned unto destruction. Now, we want to live free from that. And that is what God has come to do. You know, Jesus Christ, the Bible says clearly, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall forgive his people from their sins. What that means is he will bring deliverance for people. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall forgive his people from their sins. What does that mean? Uh, I want to start off by saying that forgiveness is not defined in us uh, uh, coming to a place where we see God is not angry. That is not forgiveness. The blood of Jesus did not flow to wash the mind of God. The blood of Jesus was not what God demanded so that when He sees the blood, then He can forgive us. Uh, in order to define forgiveness, we need to define what sin is. Because the Bible says that His name shall be called Jesus, for He shall forgive His people uh, from their sins. Or He shall forgive His people, set His people free from their sins. So what is sin? Uh, the word sin, and I want to read it to you um, here from, from, just directly from the Hebrew. And uh, it is nasa, it is the Hebrew letter 5375. And what it means, it means to bear, to lift up, to carry, or to take. Um, it means to be lifted up, to be exalted, to lift oneself up, to rise up. To bear, to carry, to be taken away, to uh, be carried off, to be swept away. So what he's talking about here is that um, w when you talk about forgiveness of sins, it is God has come and carried, take away, bear, uh, lift up, exalt us out of, it means to set, be set free of sin. That is the word forgive. The word sin uh, itself, sorry, I've, I've got two words wrong way around here. I've just spoken about forgiveness. That was forgive means. But what is sin? Sin means to miss the mark or not to be, to have a share in and or not to partake of. So sin is not to partake of what God has intended for us. And what did God want to give us? He's come to give us eternal life. He's come to share His quality of life with us. He's come to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in us. So um, when we look at forgiveness of sins, it actually means where God takes away from us the fact that we are not partaking of His goodness. Now that has got nothing to do with satisfying the anger of God or any of those things. I would like to um, just refer you to a verse in the Bible, Genesis 4, verse 13, where the word forgiveness was also used in a different, um, se a different way and, and will help us to know what forgiveness is. It says here, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. That word bear there is the word forgive. Um, now, we can see it in two ways. It is like the punishment that I have is so great that I will never be able to forgive myself. That's one thing. Or he can say, it can mean, I cannot carry this. This is too much for me. Forgive me, Lord. What would forgive means? Would you carry this? Would you carry this? Would you please take the consequences of what I am caught in away from me, please? So um, that is what this is all about. It is, it's all about um, God taking the man away from the place where he is not a partaker of God's quality of life. That is the forgiveness of sins. We have defined forgiveness of sins as God forgiving us. In other words, that he's not angry with us anymore when we are, um, because we've transgressed the law. That is not what forgiveness is. It, does, it doesn't mean that. We can define it inside law terms, but we would like to define it inside family terms and inside what Christ has brought for us. So I want to, I've got good news for you. Jesus Christ is there to forgive you from or to set you free from what destroys your life. So in other words, if we really talk about forgiveness, we are forgiven from dying. 
So when Adam and Eve sinned, now listen to this, we say they sinned. The Bible says through the disobedience of one, sin entered the world. So Adam was disobedient, and through this disobedience and wrong belief, man came to a place where death abounded unto all, and that is, so in other words, sin, missing the mark, and man dying. So what God, forgiveness is defined in how God can reach his goal with man and make man a partaker of his finished work. That is what forgiveness is all about. It's got nothing to do with an angry God whose anger needs to be satisfied. Somebody needs to be beaten up. I want to tell you, God is forgiving you from death. He is forgiving you from destruction. He is forgiving you from uh, being in a place where you want to do good, but you cannot do it. He is forgiving you from the fruit of the flesh. That is forgiveness. The correct word for forgive in our understanding of it would be deliver. Wherein we say, deliver me from this body of death. And that is what Paul said. Who shall save me from this body of death? We can also say, who shall forgive me or deliver me or send this body of death away from me that I can have life? So I want you guys never again to think of forgiveness as in God not being angry with me. And there might be some of you watching right now that feel guilty, you feel uh, separated from God, you feel far, you feel remorse for certain things that you have done. I want to tell you that God loves you, God cares so much for you, that you can actually go to Him and that He looks at you in that situation, He says, you know what, I've got the power to raise you up out of that death. I've got the power to raise you up out of um, your a drug addiction, I've got the power. If, if you know the way God forgives you for using drugs is by setting you free from drugs. Th that is forgiveness. If forgiveness has got nothing to do with God now being angry, forgiveness has got everything to do with God bringing His goal to manifestation in your life. And His goal was to present a man in the Godhead there that could be uh, fully. Um, a, 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 a full manifestation of a truth about you, of where you are included into that so that you can see that truth. And by seeing that truth, you will see Christ setting you free from sin, Christ setting you free from death, Christ setting you free from destruction. You know, when Jesus was being nailed to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know what he was saying? He was says, Father, destroy the death in them for they are dying. Help them. They are dying and set them free. They're not knowing what they're doing. Here they're nailing Jesus and he's praying for the Father to set them free from dying. Um, because he's seeing how death is having its work in these people and blinding their minds, not knowing what they are doing. And that is how I see it. Forgiveness in its true form, means to divorce, to send away, to carry, to bear. So if Jesus had, if God wanted to forgive man, um, he had to come and give eternal life as a free gift to man. That is forgiveness. Forgiveness has got nothing to do with anger, observing an external commandment wherein God got ticked off because we broke a law and we couldn't keep that law. And now, you know, he sits in this justice system. Like I asked somebody um, the other day, and I mean, I've, I had to answer that myself. Which is the greatest, the law or God? Because if, if the law is greater, then I can serve the law without believing in God. You know, because I'm obeying the law. No, God is the greatest. He's greater than any law. He's greater than anything. God is not easily provoked. God doesn't easily become angry. You know, and the message we've had about Adam and Eve was, Adam messed up and God was angry until he sees blood he cannot forgive. That is just absolute rubbish. It is not the gospel. It is not a message that has got the substance to produce faith in our hearts and trust and reliance upon a God that can forgive us from our sins. You know, if I've got a sin, if I've got any problem in my life, I go to God for forgiveness. Another word for that forgiveness would mean for Him to take it away from me. That is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with anger. It's got nothing to do with destruction. It's got nothing to do with God wanting to pour out death upon people. You know, Jesus Christ is the death of that which um, destroys you. Jesus Christ is the death of 
you not partaking in the Godhead. The, doesn't the Bible say that in the Godhead dwells the fullness, or in Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily? Do you mean, do you know what that means? It means that you have been forgiven from every sin and death, from every not partaking in the quality of God's life, and even physical death, why? Because Christ has united you with God. And that's how forgiveness of sins take place. The shallow thing of, well, I'm not, I'm not thinking of your sin, I'm forgiving you. And, now that is not, that, that's not forgiveness. God has never walked with a grudge in his heart. I want to say it again. The Old Testament God, if you want to call him like that, has never mm-hmm. worked or, or walked with a grudge in his heart towards man. And he never needed Jesus to set him free from the grudge from a grudge towards humanity Uh, why Jesus was needed was we needed to see how God would treat a man that carries the sin of the whole world and how God could conquer sin and death in that man and that man's sin and death had to be ours so that we can say we can be forgiven from uh, from living a life in fruit of the flesh and we can be forgiven from dying glory to God so the end of our salvation is an immortal body flooded with the goodness and the kindness of God. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you feel to do so, share this with as many people as possible. You know, we don't have to um, have a, a, a life where we are um, living with guilt. We don't have to have a life where we are condemned to the fruit of the flesh. You've forgiven. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. And let us not ha- let forgiveness have this shallow uh, um parameters this this narrow way of thinking which is just defined inside uh, uh, the breaking of a commandment and those kind of things no the flowing of the blood of jesus needs to make sense the death needs to make sense a physical resurrection needs to make sense church come on let us wake up let us let us awake unto the truth let us see what christ has come to do i want to tell you the vengeance of god the fire of god's love is burning and it is consuming everything that's destroying man and that is forgiveness that's why we are walking in the forgiveness of god he is setting us free let us get in our minds that forgiveness has got nothing to do with an angry god feeling better one morning when he saw his son died but it's got everything to do with with God setting us free. Glory to God. Thank you so much. You guys are loved. I love you. Um, you are blessed. I just see there Greg Henry, Dwight, uh, Amanda Furi is watching. Guys, everybody that has been just liking this um, is, you know, thank you so much for for liking this and just uh, sharing this. You know, when you put a like, people see it and, they, and it's just another way where they can hear the gospel. Thank you for that. You guys are awesome. Well, I am uh, I'm in Canada preaching and uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, I had an awesome service uh, earlier today and uh, then tomorrow I'm going to do two services and then we're moving off to the next place. If you are in Canada, check out uh, my itinerary. Go to latest news on my website. Go to BertieBrits.com or DynamicMinistries.com and you can see where I'll be in Canada. Glory to God. Amen.